Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. If uh, the entertainment industry is a sinking ship, then Mindy Kaling is stood smugly, smirking whilst directing all of the panicking passengers onto a lifeboat made entirely out of Swiss cheese. Now, I'm a fan of Scooby-Doo. I wouldn't say, you know, I wouldn't go as far as say I'm as, 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 you know, as I'm a super fan. I'm not particularly knowledgeable. I watched a few iterations of the, uh, the cartoons growing up. Uh, the movies as well, particularly uh, What's New Scooby-Doo, which possibly has, you know, it's definitely up there with some of the best uh, cartoon theme tunes. What's this We're gonna follow you. You're gonna stop that mystery. Now, I can't quite believe I'm saying this, but uh, the new Velma series, spearheaded by Mindy herself, has somehow opened to a fan reception even more frigid than that of She-Hulk. <laughs> I, they said it couldn't be done. They said it couldn't be done, but by God, they've managed it. <laughs> Jinkies. What a fantastic score you've landed there. That's a whole 9% from the audience there. You probably would have got a better reception if you just aired a 30-minute video of Mindy walking around a children's hospital punching the patients. And even a 50% from the critics is uh, is pretty rough going. But we know how emotional people can get on Rotten Tomatoes, and we know how not very critical the critics are. So, you know, let's take a look at IMDb. Maybe that'll tell us a different story. Oh, my God. Oh, hell no, man. It got a 2.5. It got a 2.5. <laughs> I would I would like to remind you, just to put this into context, that Dragon Ball Evolution got 2.7. This is currently This is currently rated worse than Dragon Ball Evolution. And if you don't know why that's bad, then your life is considerably better than mine. And anyone else who watched that monstrosity, <laughs> 2.5. Well, it's fair to say that I'm more than a little bit intrigued to uh, see what this is like then. Uh, you know, it's still very cold here in uh, little old England, so a dumpster fire is more than welcome. Let's take a little look, shall we? This is my origin story. Sure. Normally, origin stories are about tall, handsome guys struggling with the burden of being handed even more power. Oh, we, we're, we're just coming right out of the gate swinging, are we? This... One of the things I've heard people complaining about quite a lot is this very smug, very, you know, the, the holier-than-thou attitude that the show seems to have. And right out of the gate, the show is taking shots at origin stories? A weirdly specific area of storytelling to go after there, but okay, let's let's entertain this quip. You say that all origin stories are about tall, handsome guys dealing with the burden of being handed more power. Well... Let's take a look at a, a top 10 list of best origin stories, shall we? By um, Watch Mojo. Bloody Watch Mojo. Number 10, The Hobbit. <laughs> I wouldn't call him particularly tall. The handsome bit could also be question number nine, Monsters University. Okay, now Sully is rather tall, but again, not too sure about the handsome bit. Number eight, Prometheus. Well, unless you class this as handsome, I'm not too sure about that one either. Maleficent, that's a woman. Kill Bill, part two. That's also a woman. Number five, Hannibal Rising. Ah, yes, the story about a boy whose entire family is dead. That seems to fit Mindy's bill quite well. Although, I think calling that movie good is a bit of a stretch. Number four, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. That's about an ape. Number three, Star Trek 2009. We don't talk about that. Number two, Casino Royale. I mean, I don't know about an origin story. I mean, sure, it's, it's the first Bond book, but yeah, I don't know about that one. And finally, number one, The Godfather Part Two. Possibly one of the greatest stories in the visual arts and something I think Mindy has no business associating with. So I would say that's a fairly unjust and a bit of a cherry-picked jab there, but it's, it's, it's the first line of the show. I, I'm, I'm sure we can forgive that. And if they are about girls, it's usually like, hey, what made this hot chick go crazy? She just seems to be focusing on the superficial. Like, you know, going on about tall, handsome, hot, whatever. But if I was to refer to a woman as short and ugly, I think Mindy is the kind of person that might have something to say about that. So, I don't know. Maybe just don't focus on that stuff. You know, the stuff that just doesn't really matter. And if you're wondering why I keep saying Mindy and not Velma, it's because this is just a, this is clearly just a self-insert. This is, you know, this isn't an attempt at portraying the character Velma. We can all agree on that, right? Now, I think there are various origin stories for how the Mystery Gang got together, but uh, I think 
the, the widely agreed upon uh, origin story is that you know they all met in high school and it's uh, you know it started from there. But this being the Velma show, I'll, I'll give you one guess whose idea it was. Yeah, it was me. Not Fred and his weird sex fan. That's right. It was Velma's idea. Not only was it Velma's idea, but Fred sucks too. Boo. Boo. White man. Naughty boo. Nasty white man. And uh, was that a shot at the mystery mobile as well? Fred and his weird sex fan. I, you know, I mean, you can take shots at Fred all you like, but you leave the mystery mobile out of this. I would also like to point out that up until this point, Scooby-Doo has been a kid slash family entertainment so referring to the mystery mobile as a sex van is uh, it's a little bit weird i'm struggling to get past the first few sentences here this is my story told my way boo no one asked for that boo okay 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 uh, maybe i'm getting a little bit ahead of myself this is you know this is just the intro maybe the establishing shot will will win us back over with unparalleled levels of comedy he said sarcastically Ugh. Ugh. this school sucks I'm not going to enjoy this, am I? Have you ever noticed how pilot episodes of TV shows always have more gratuitous sex and nudity than the rest of the series? Oh no, it's self-aware. You can't be self-aware and painfully out of touch. It, it, it doesn't work. Um, the only hook a good show ever needs is good storytelling. I mean, yeah. I, I feel like they're trying to like be meta and make fun of this, but it's, it's true. People will forgive, like, bad CG and a lack of A-list stars and any number of things way before they'd forgive, like, bad writing. Because at the end of the day, at least it's still a good story. And it didn't Mindy write for The Office. That's literally what that was. Nothing flashy. No A-list stars. I mean, obviously, Steve Carell and John Krasinski weren't big stars when that show started. It was just good writing. And now you're making fun of that? I... Come on. How, how out of touch are you? Come on, man. <gasps> And how do you feel about race-blind casting, Daphne? Well, as an Asian woman, I, um, think it's cool. I mean, not to oversimplify a thorny issue, but everyone loves it when white people play Jesus or a professional boxer. Why can't it ever go the other way, right? Ah, uh, okay. Um, uh, I'm going to ignore the whole Jesus thing. But come on, you do know there are professional white boxers as well. I mean, you know, one of the best boxers in the world right now is a white dude. Yes, of course, you know, boxing has always been predominantly black, but was, was that a shot at Rocky? <laughs> that was a story written by Stallone himself, and he then starred it in himself. There's, there's a very big difference between writing something, creating something new yourself, and taking something someone else made and changing that. There's, there's a big difference. Brenda, wait, did you climb in my locker to prove how skinny you are again? Ugh, we get it. Is is that a thing people do? <laughs> I mean, we don't really have lockers here in the UK. That's that's more of an American thing. So Americans, you'll have to let me know if that's a thing people do. Oh, look how skinny I am because I can fit inside a metal cupboard. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm a suspect. I thought lesbians were good at solving crimes. <laughs> uh, what? I thought lesbians were good at solving crimes. Uh, okay. I'm, I'm starting to wonder if I'm the one that's out of touch. Is, is that a stereotype? Uh, if so, I, I had no idea. That's that's a new one. Because I hate your stupid adopted daughter and her fake-ass friends. It's going to be one of them, is it? Really dislikable protagonists that you expect to go on this wild story arc where they eventually end up seeing the error of their ways and then, you know, they mellow out and become more endearing towards the audience. Except, no, that's not what's going to happen. They're not going to go on that arc. They're just going to remain dislikable. Because Hollywood is incredibly predictable these days. It's the same old shit, different backdrop. And then funnily enough, the plot turns the stupid up to 11. Okay, uh, let me just get this straight. So Velma is a suspect in a murder case. And the two, the two policemen women who bring her in for interrogation are so incompetent that they ask her to solve the murder case for them. 
Right. And it's not me calling them incompetent, by the way. They just come out and say it. We know you couldn't kill Brenda, sweetie. But we also know we're not like the best detectives. So the only way we're going to convince the sheriff you're innocent is if you help us find Brenda's actual murderer. Now, hold on. Just before you start saying this is dumb, this is stupid, like this is stupid dumb, this is mega dumb, this is stupid dumb dumb mega dumb, there's no way a human being wrote this ridiculous garbage. You're absolutely right. That's, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it, yeah. And then along comes Fred. And, you know, it, it's it's a shame that it's Glenn Howerton from Always Sunny. I mean, you know, I will never say a bad word about that man. I have contained my rage for as long as possible, but I shall unleash my fury upon you like the crashing of a thousand waves! Be gone, vile man! Be gone from me! The funny thing is, though, they, they make Fred out to be this douchebag. They, they want you to hate him. But because it's Mindy sort of rubbing her hands, sort of saying... Yeah, you're going to hate this guy. You actually find yourself gravitated towards that character more than any of the others. It's Velma from school. You cheat off me in Spanish because you think I'm Mexican. Maybe. I have a disease where I can't recognize people who aren't hot. My doctor says it's basically sickle cell for rich guys. That's the only remotely funny line there has been so far. And believe me, there's been many attempts. Nah, I know. I'm caliente, as this one's people would say. <laughs> Get it? It's funny because... The white guy's ignorant. Okay. Velma, that's not fair. I'm not just a waitress. I'm also a basic bitch who doesn't even know how to use hashtags. <laughs> oh, wait, that's not funny. I'd like to think, you know, in, in one, two, three thousand years when archaeologists dig up whatever's left of this society, they'll be able to carbon date the exact moment that comedy died. And it'll be whenever this show started airing. How far thou hast fallen? I mean, come, you know, from The Office, one of the funniest shows, from writing on The Office to this. I, I mean, what next? A genuine pony reference. You're horny, let's do it. Ride it, my pony. Oh, for real? <laughs> okay. Thelma! There you are! Norville? What the hell? You didn't answer my VMs, voicemails. And then my dad heard me call you the B word, so I lost my phone for 24 hours. Yay, it's Shaggy, except it's not because they called him Norville. <sighs> they called him Norville. I know some of you are gonna say, oh, well, actually, Norville is Shaggy's real name. And yeah, sure, it is. But who, who calls Shaggy Norville? No one calls him that. Even the television shows and the movies don't call him that. Fun fact though, he actually was originally given the name Norville because it's a reference to Oliver Hardy's middle name, which is Norvell. If you're not laughing, you're learning. Or in the case of this show, neither. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of fun. Anyway, we then find out that Velma's mum left her and her dad when she was young and she did this because she hated them both. <laughs> Sounds about right. You would then expect this revelation to send Velma on this character arc that would make her realize the error of her ways and how abrasive she's being and, you know, it's okay to be a nice person, but <laughs> she's not going to do that. What are you, stupid? That doesn't happen. Ah! Velma, did you fall? No, I'm cool and graceful like a swan. Okay, because it really sounded like you fell. <sighs> and then, and I'm not joking, Velma then finds out that the cure for these hallucinations she's been having is comedy. <laughs> she's screwed. What's going on? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm adding this little bit in after the fact because uh, I've just realized Scooby-Doo isn't in it. I, I like, I, I don't know if he comes in later on, but I, I don't know how I didn't pick up on it. He's not in it. Did, did they get rid of Scooby-Doo? In a Scooby-Doo show? She didn't do that. She... No. <laughs> no. And that's about it for episode one. I... That was... That was really good. I can't see what all the fuss is about myself. I don't know why anyone's got any complaints about this show. I, I can't wait to watch episode two. Hopefully, you'll join me for that. But in the meantime, like and subscribe. You bitch. And of course, a big shout out to my top tier members, Puzzlemon, Flunky, Jax, and Brennus. 
If you were all female protagonists, you'd be likable. Also, the tier two members, Steve the Goat, Dr. Melsky, Saeed, MG, Virgil, Kuno, Sako, Mark, Maiden, Sensei, Fang, Hansu, Michael, Terpia, Yarnwich, and we're welcoming Mendicant Bias. Welcome to the tier two, my friend. It's great to have a new face. And of course, a big thank you to the tier one members as well. Also welcoming two new tier one members, Mark Connolly and Jason Coward. Big thank you to both of you for joining. Welcome to the crew. And of course, a big thank you to each and every one of you. I could do it without you, but it'd be quite a bit harder and a lot more shit. So I really do, I, I really do appreciate you guys' support. Uh, you know, I probably don't uh, reciprocate it quite as much as I should, but uh, you know, I when I find a way of repaying you, you know, the, the debt that I do owe you guys, uh, you know, I, I'll, I'll do something. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. And that's it. Thank you for joining me for this video. Will you join me? For the next one, you better do, you little bitch. But in the meantime, take care of yourselves, guys. And I hope to see you very soon.